So when you've had a long day at work, and you're tired, and you're hungry, and you're standing in that taxi queue, and the same thought comes to your mind that comes every single day, I need to get a car. Before you get a car, hold up. financial tip that we need to consider number one cost of ownership so not only do you need to consider the cost of the repayment of the car but you also need to consider the cost of fuel and also insurance those can significantly increase the amount that you have to pay for your car and it's something that you need to consider when you want to buy a car there are some ways that you can control how much fuel you have. I know for me specifically, before I leave any place, I go on my Google Maps to see which is the best route that I can use. But it saves me from being in traffic and also cuts down the amount of fuel that I use on a trip. Number two, good credit score. Before you get a car, you need to have a good credit score because no financial institution will likely give you a loan if your credit score is bad. So the better your, your credit score is, the higher chances you will get a loan. Then the third thing you also want to consider is do I, do I want to buy a car secondhand or do I want to buy it brand new? So one of the benefits of buying a car brand new according to it is, the, is, the, is that when you buy a car brand new, it still is under full manufacturer warranty, which basically means if there's a default in the car, that the, you bought a car that had a default in it, then they will cover it fully for, for you and you don't have to pay for it. So that's the one thing the, that benefits from getting a brand new car. You can also change the, the specifics. You want this, you want that, you want a sunroof, you want a different color, whatever it is, it's then easier to then get it that way as well. The, the disadvantages of buying a car brand new is that as soon as you drive off from the dealership, the depreciation on the car drops significantly. So that's the one thing is that you as the first time owner then gets impacted by initial depreciation. Y even if you go back to the same dealership that same day, you're not gonna get the full price for the car because as soon as you drive off, the price and the value of that car initially depreciates significantly and you as a first time owner is the one who gets that, that knock. There are also other implications as well for buying a brand new car, like CO2 tax or sales VAT as well. Generally also, more new cars are just generally more expensive than secondhand cars. I think that speaks for itself. If you want to then not to buy a car new, you can then buy it secondhand. One of the benefits of buying a car secondhand is that it is cheaper than a brand new car. This can result in lower interest rate because you're getting it at a lower price and also lower insurance because it's cheaper than a brand new car. You could also still potentially benefit of a car that is still under motor plan or warranty if that is transferred to you from the previous owner. The disadvantage of buying a secondhand car is that if it's old and it's, it's not under service plan anymore is that you could pay a high price for repairs and maintenance. So that's something that you have to consider. If it's an old car, old cars break down. Maybe you need to get a new tire, maybe a part has broken, and then that's something that you have to consider when you're buying an older car. So one thing that you also want to consider when you're buying a car is buying it from a reputable company. There are companies that will do checks and will make sure that all of the documents are in place before you buy a car. Don't be in a rush to buy a car. You can save up for a deposit, and the deposit will reduce your monthly repayments on the car. So how does that work? In this example, with the following key financial data, with the interest rate of 7.75, loan payment term of five years, and then payment per year, 12 months, and then loan amount of 200,000. The amortization will look as follows. The key takeaways here is that we can see that from this, that you'll be paying 50,000 Rand upfront for the deposit and you'll save an amount of 64K on the total repayments and 10,000K for total interest. Alternatively, 
you can have a, re a residual or a balloon payment. This means that instead of paying up front for the deposit, because the deposit you paid up front, a residual or balloon payment is something that you pay at the end of the, the, the lease term. This can cause a lot of stress, especially when the term of the lease is coming to an end because you have to make sure that you've saved up enough money to pay for the residual. So there are three options that I've researched and I found that when you're now getting to the term of your your lease and you have a, a balloon payment or residual payment, there are three things that you consider doing. You can trade in the asset that you've had uh, under lease agreement and based on the value of the trade in, you can use that to then settle your outstanding loan. Number two is that you can get a new loan to then finance the balloon payment that you need to pay back. And then number three, you can then obviously make a payout of the amount that you have and then you can own that asset outright. So should you choose to get a car that's not under service or maintenance plan, the one thing that you can do is to get a maintenance plan or service plan after you get the car, or you can then save up each month for any unexpected costs that you may incur in the future. The last thing that also you can consider is that paying a little bit towards your monthly repayment each month can reduce the amount of time that you have to pay for the car or and also reduce the amount that you have to pay back. If we look at this example, a loan amount of 200,000, fixed interest rate of 7.75, loan payment terms of five years, payment per year, 12 months, early termination penalty, three months of interest. From this example, we can see that paying an extra 500 rand per month, you can save 5K in total interest and re reduce your loan term by seven months. It can happen that some companies have a penalty for paying back your loan early. Sometimes that's like three, that can be three months of interest. If we look at our example, the first three months of interest is equal to 3.8K and our savings will be 5K. That's about a 2K saving. Uh, just to wrap up some of the items that we discussed today that we need to consider when buying a car, we need to consider the cost of ownership, a good credit score, second-hand or brand new car, deposit, residual or balloon payment, and also saving for unexpected costs, and also paying a little bit extra towards your monthly repayment. My name is Nosi and thank you for joining me on this video. Please comment down below if this has been helpful for you and also leave financial tips that you have used when buying your car. The name of my channel is Finance with Nosi and thank you for watching my video.